Hey everybody, welcome back. James here again with you. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you how to properly mount and level a rifle scope. It doesn't matter whether it's an air rifle, rim fire, or center fire. I'm gonna show you right now what a scope does or a rifle does when you do not have the scope perfectly aligned. And before I show you that, I want to let you know there's two things that makes a gun and scope pair up and allows them to be accurate and precise. And that is, number one, the proper way to mount a scope correctly. And number two, whether it's the ammunition in a rimfire or centerfire or in an air gun, how well the pellet or slug is tuned in. So... Again, I'm going to show you now what it does downrange at 25 yards and 50 yards with my Air Venturi Avenger using my new Barska 3 to 9 by 32 Blackhawk IR scope. So, let me show you what it does when it's out of alignment at 25 and 50 yards. Okay, here we go. 25 yards. Plumb line down on target. That was dead nuts on. Woo! Here we go. 50 yards. Well, that didn't line up perfectly. So you've seen there, at 25 it was on, and at 50 it wanted to veer. And that's what a lot of people claim is drift or wind. And once you have that tuned out, you should not have to worry about that. So now, I'm going to show you how I got the scope aligned perfectly to my barrel, because you cannot align your scope or the top cap of the scope just to the plumb line on a wall without aligning your barrel and everything and getting everything in the perfect lineup because if you don't again you just see what happens and then people want to claim or shooters want to claim it's the wind and I always shoot in the wind I always shoot out in the open as you guys have seen and I'm capable of taking out playing cards out past 200 yards or so in the wind with not holding for wind that's the thing so I want to share with you my procedure in doing that. So as you've seen there, what happened at 50 yards that the pellet drifted away from my point of aim. So that was the problem right there. So what happened was that the barrel and scope were pointed away from each other. Even though they were close at 25 yards, they intersected. But on a horizontal plane, they were off center of each other they're not perfectly in line so that's what happens so now i'm going to show you what it's supposed to look like and this is why i shoot with plumb lines down range whether it's 25 yards or 50 yards or beyond that to make sure that my reticle is perfectly lined up because i have my reticle perfectly aligned on my rifle and that's how i found out how to do this because i have my rifle in the perfect vertical position and then you align the reticle up to it you do not go off this rail you don't go off the top cap none of that means anything you have to go off the entire gun because that's what you're holding on to so check this out okay here we go 50 yards again Right on the money. Okay, 25 yards just to check confirmation. There we go. Now I just gotta adjust out my scope a little bit and I'm set. 
There's 25 yards and 50 yards. I fixed the issue at 50 yards and brought it back to 25 and they perfectly lined up with the plumb line. Now what I had to do was, and many of you asked me this many times before in the comments, saying, hey James, I noticed your scoop rings are swapped backwards. What's the point of that? Well, this right here is why. Because you can torque the scope certain directions to line the barrel or bore up to each other. And if you change the position on these scope rings, move them up or down, that'll also shift your scope left or right. So for instance, this top ring here, this front ring, I had to move it all the way up this far to align the scope back over, as you've seen, perfectly in alignment. So now, with that said, I'm going to test it even farther and show you something real quick, what I could do with this 3 to 9 by 32 Barska scope. Got it. So you've seen, even at 100 yards, and I'm not even holding for wind, that's the thing. Your scope and your bore have to be aligned. So how do you get to that point? Again, you have to make sure that your scope and your bore are in perfect alignment, because if they're not, they never will be. And then secondly, you have to have either a good tune and an air rifle, or find the tune. And then again, in rim fire, you have to shoot the right ammunition or center fire, same difference. And you could check this at two different yardages. So now I'm gonna go into depth on how I actually did it. I'm gonna break it down for you guys, hopefully very simple so you could try this too. And get your scope set perfectly. That way you should not have this issue of drifting or claiming the wind. Because I do not, until I get to out to a way, way out there range, I do not have to care for wind that much. And a lot of you seen my shooting, and I just don't, that's how it is for me. Because I figured this out right here, this little secret. So let me get inside here and show you exactly my breakdown on how I did it. Okay, so you can see here that I have the Air Venturi Avenger on a bipod on my countertop, but the problem is the countertop is not perfectly level. So if you go off this countertop or whatever rest you're using or whatever you're doing, you have to make sure that that surface is perfectly level. That way you can get your gun perfectly vertical. Again, whether it's in a bipod or a rest or anything like that. And I'm running my side shot up here. As you can see that the plumb line down there, it is pretty spot on the way it's sitting. And that's what most people would get out of it because this method is just unknown. Nobody's ever come up with this method before. So as you can see, I have my own little device that I made called the no lie level. And make sure it pairs up here with my other level just to confirm. And what I do is I take this no lie level and put it on the barrel, the shroud, or whatever it is, just like so and get it to line up perfectly. Hopefully I can get it because it's at an angle. I usually do this with the barrel straight pointing at the wall. We may have to come back here a little bit. And that's why I put the string on it. I'll just use the barrel band for an example. Okay. So you can see there that the barrel band just stopped it, that's okay. Okay, we are matching the bubble level on the countertop to the top of the barrel shroud here. As you can see, now through the side shot, I'm gonna get this to focus in. I have my scope backed out all the way to three power. And you can see it is not exactly on the way it was sitting. It's just a hair off. That line, has to be perfect all the way up and down. And no matter how close you get it, it's not that perfect without doing this. So what you have to do is you have to hold the gun and twist it till it levels out just like I'm doing there. As you can see with the bubble level on top of the barrel, 
and that is perfectly in line with the reticle. Just like so. Because I use holdover and it makes perfect sense for me to have it all the way leveled out, especially with holdover, because if the bottom of the part of the reticle is candid, you're gonna always get that drift. Wind or no wind. And now it's perfectly aligned. And the bubble level is even, dead center here on top of the barrel. Just like so, I do this to all my guns, and this is why they shoot so well. Now the problem with these scopes is, the longer the scope is, the harder it is to adjust out because you're fighting that angle of the rail. And that's why I do not go off the rail. Now we can confirm the scope cap to see how good it's on, and it's dead center on also. But I do not always do that because you don't ever know if the turret's on, so you never want to assume. Now that you've seen how I got my scope and my rifle plumb with each other, vertical, now you can test for ammunition and see which one groups the best. And once you find that out, then you can also start messing with the scope rings to get the scope in perfect alignment on the horizontal plane of this rifle or any other rifle. And then you can get crazy like this. Let me show you. Upside down. Holy cow. Woo! The side shot did not like that at all. 50 yards with the gun upside down. Crossman from your hollow points. Woohoo! That was a perfect hit. Woohoo! So once you've found the correct ammunition, the right tune, and get your scope vertically plumb to your rifle, and have your rifle vertically plumb to your scope, it then starts to become really fun. But again, also, if you don't, just like when I first got my Element Helix Scope, when I used the adjustable rings on that, it was pretty close. But again, as I mentioned, the longer scopes are horrible with alignment because you're fighting that longer angle. And then you have to mess with the rings, whether you have to swap them around and torque them a certain direction and move the ring up or down. And what I do is, I leave one ring set, as you can see, and I mess with the top or front ring here, and if you push it up more, it'll change the direction it shifts down range. So, again, once you have it all aligned, it really becomes fun shooting, and the sky's the limit. On our winds 810 feet per second 100 yards 16 grain air arms that's not much hold for wind right there Woo! and with that said about the element helix scope once I finally got it aligned and everything perfect I was able to hit two playing cards in the wind not holding for wind at a hundred yards back to back. Check this out.
especially not having to hold for wind at such farther ranges than what most people shoot it is definitely fun to do that so i hope you guys got something from this video and learned how i get my scopes properly mounted and leveled to my rifles because i want my rifle straight up and down i want my reticle vertically plumb and match the rifle itself and then your tune comes in your ammunition of getting it paired up and how well that groups for you and then you can start playing with where your scope needs to shift on the horizontal plane to match up correctly at closer range and farther ranges and again once you have that paired up it should match all the way out to whatever distance you want to shoot at again the limitations are you that's what it comes down to and what this also proves that it doesn't really matter about the high quality scopes even though don't get me wrong they're great to have if that's what you choose to buy but that really doesn't mean anything if you can get an inexpensive budget scope to align perfectly also with that said everybody i hope you got something from this video i appreciate you watching as always and if you're interested in the no lie level that i created let me know and i'll catch you guys on the next one thanks again